Hello there, everyone. Welcome to CGTN. I'm Zhong Shi. Archaeologists' work to sweep away the dust accumulated over thousands of years gives us new insights into ancient civilizations, and very often in the absence of other historical records. The discovery of Sun Xingdui in 1986 aroused immediate interest in academic circles worldwide. It also brought new questions and layers of mystery. Thirty-five years later, six newly discovered pits are now being excavated. What will be found in them? And let our special coverage on China's archaeological missing link accompany you into the wonders of Sun Xingdui. Later in our show, we'll go to a live signal shared by the Mandarin channel of the China Media Group. My colleague Zhu Wangchen is there with more details of the excavation. There will also be reporters and guests with him. We'll be enlisting their help throughout our special coverage today. China has announced major archaeological finds that could shed more light on its ancient civilization. Authorities say six additional pits have been found in Sun Xingdui in the southwest province of Sichuan. More than 500 artifacts have been discovered. The ruins date back to 5,000 years ago. They belong to the Shu Kingdom, which mysteriously disappeared. The site was listed among China's top 10 archaeological finds of the 20th century. It was first discovered in the late 1920s, but the first two pits weren't excavated until 1986. Authorities resumed the excavation in 2019. And now for the latest on the spot, let's go live to CGTN's Ji Xiaojun in Guanghan, Sichuan Province, where the Sun Xingdui ruins are based. Xiaojun, good afternoon to you. You have no idea how much we envy you being there on the site, witnessing the new discoveries this time. We know more than 500 artifacts have been discovered in the six new pits at Sun Xingdui. Tell us more, Xiaojun. Well, indeed, this is a privilege reporting in front of the excavation site right behind me. Now, indeed, like you said,、uh, over 500 artifacts have been come to have come to the surface. Just before I go into the details, here is a layout of the、uh, six newly disco-、uh, discovered pits. This is pit number one and pit,、uh, uh, pit number two. These are the previously discovered pits, and in between. Just remember the distance between the two pits are around 30 meters. In between, they found this six new pits, and、um, uh, over 500 of them have already come to the surface. But most of them, like I said earlier, still remain in the pits. As、uh, researchers will have to、uh, take extreme caution before they take any moves. They have to make sure all the preservations and、uh, protection measures are in place before they can move on. Now, let me just、uh, give you a rough idea. First, they found、uh, piles of elephant tusks. They found、uh, bronze heads, bronze figurines,、uh, jade wares, and also pottery and golden. Uh, foils in different pits. Now, preliminary work has been completed with pits number three to number six, and still ongoing with pits number seven and number eight. Let's go through some of the、um, uh, artifacts that have come to the surface、uh, from pit to pit.、Uh, only some of them.、Um, let's start with pit、uh, number three. What is most remarkable is they've found some new findings、uh, which they've never seen before, including、uh, one figurine, one bronze figurine,、uh, holding a large vessel. This is never seen before, and there is also one uh, bronze uh, uh, bronze vessel, bronze utensil with、uh, round opening, which is. Which possibly could be the largest and most intact so far discovered, and the,、um, there's also、um, a possibly a large bronze mask. It's still half buried, but、uh, experts believe that if the whole mask was unearthed, and then it could be, if not the largest, one of the largest、uh, bronze face masks、uh, to be discovered here at San Xingdui. Uh, we don't know whether it's a bronze face mask with those protruding eyes, which is most iconic at the San Xingdui museums, and there are also possibly some、uh, bronze trees. 
Uh, remember, we excavated eight sacred trees, as we call them, uh, sacred trees, bronze trees, uh, from the, uh, the previous two discovered kits, and they're expecting more uh, bronze sacred trees uh, to be discovered. And this is more with pits number three. Actually, if you walk into uh, pit number three, uh, what caught your attention first was uh, would be uh, the piles of elephant mud, uh, tusks. And it's also obvious, and when they walk to pit number four, in pit number four, there are also piles, piles of complete uh, elephant tusks. Um, there are also jade wares and potteries. And as I said earlier, um, antiques, uh, tend to be extremely fragile as they've been buried underground for thousands of years and they have to take extreme measures to protect and preserve them. But I do hear news or they have plans to uh, take out maybe some jade wares out of uh, pit uh, uh, number four, but it's all up to changes. Once again, they have to make sure that all uh, protection measures are in place before they can move on. And they've uh, also found some uh, 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 potteries, like I said, and jade wares. And um, in, well, the, uh, the jade where they plan to take out most likely is a jade song, which is a jade column. Uh, it's square on the outside, but circular on the inside. It's a, also um, used in, um, uh, in the sacrificial rituals in ancient times. And with pit number five, what is most remarkable is they discovered a golden face mask. It's not complete, but it's a remarkable golden face mask. It's already been taken out of the pit and sent to restoration uh, center. And at the same time, they've also found some golden foils. And what is also extremely remarkable is a a golden bird-shaped uh, foil and together with some uh, ivory carvings too. And in pit number six, they found a wooden box, which is a first time. And it's heavily carbonized, extremely fragile. Researchers don't know what was inside, what it was for. But at the same time, researchers are now using some modern technology, like uh, most likely uh, hyperspectral uh, scanning technology to try to analyze the elements left on the surface of the wooden box to help them understand better what was inside or what the wooden box was for. Uh, so it's going to take um, a while, I guess, I mean, before they can bring uh, the uh, wooden box out of the, uh, the pit. Uh, and there are also high hopes uh, over pits number seven and number eight, but at the same time, I have to say uh, they're still working on pits number seven and number eight, uh, uh, the, uh, the artifacts have not come to the surface yet, but they also have high hopes because if you take, still remember the, uh, the size of number, pits number seven and num number eight, they are the two largest out of the six uh, newly discovered pits. And they're hoping that they would find as rich findings in pit number seven and number eight as in number three. Uh, again, yesterday, well, actually earlier, I had the uh, opportunity to actually walk inside uh, the pits to have a close-up look at the, uh, the excavation site and also had the, the opportunity to sit down with Mr. Lei Yu, who is the director of the San Xingdui site workstation, and he told me what his interest, uh, his interest might be in. So let's take a look and have a close look at pit number three. So you feel how you feel now? You just take a look at this and you found such a thing. That one. Which one? 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 你挖下去了？嗯，那当时在那个探沟的平面上出现了一个三角形的，嗯，嗯我们叫，就它的角，就探口，它的西北角啊、嗯，嗯，那就发现肯定是一座坑，就是就是在这儿，那就是就是你当时发现的就在这儿，就是这个家伙。后来陈陈陈丹老师摸的，他说哦，这个是大口尊，我们不认识的东西，刚出来的时候，嗯。
，哎，这个这个就很神奇了，你知道吗？就你当时当当当在，然后就现在现在变成这么多东西了，嗯，对对,对，<笑>意外吗、嗯？这个发现，还是有点有些有些有些器新器械，哪些是新的呀？比如说这件，这件是下面不是一个人嘛？人，但是这件呢，最开始以为是一件单个的人，呃呃一个一个人吧，嗯嗯。嗯嗯但后来我们就希望，哎，他会不会跟这个发生关系啊？因为他那个按那个比例来说，他手到那个上面那个尊的是尊是吧？哎，对，它是连着的吗？连着，头顶着它了。哎，顶上一个尊，巨大无比的尊，它这个直接用用头给顶上。这个没见过，本本身这个尊也很怪，它上面那么多龙，各种形形象的龙，这这些东西太好了，它就是把一般的尊改改造了，改造呃本身。尊的形状加以改造，再加上在下面，再加上一个巫师，这件绝对是国宝，嗯、新器型，而且品相还不错。对，基本上没怎么碎。那、嗯、没怎么碎。嗯，这个三号坑的东西基本上比一二号坑要保存的好。他们说有烧过，尤其象牙。象牙。哎，象牙局部还是有烧的痕迹，那边就是有那个斜坡，就是烧土的那个灰。嗯嗯灰烬层嘛，啊，那就是灰烬是吧？那灰烬层很多很多的骨渣、啊，嗯，白色的小白点都是。目前出来的东西你，你你你你最最印象最深的是啥呀？除了这个坑，嗯，就那个面具，就宝坑的面具，面具就是金的那个，金的那个，啊、那多大、啊？那个，说是那个，最宽处还差不多五十公分吧、嗯。那很大呀、啊，很大，嗯，那呃，而且重量是二百八十多克，就是一半啊，嗯。如果复原只发现一半是吗、嗯？另外一半可能碎的比较厉害，还在修复，嗯，应该可以修复。也是那种是贴在祭司脸上的，不是，那是单独的，单独的面具，嗯、单独的面具，嗯嗯，这也是没有的以前，这以前有发现过吗？金,金沙有三星堆没有，三星堆的全是粘在那个铜，对对，祭司脸上的嘛，对吧？是真人大小，对对，他这个好家伙，起码两两三个头那么大啊！哦，单独的一个，单独的黄金的一个面具，黄金的面具，嗯。Hope you're intrigued. Now, if not, let's probe further the mysteries of these ancient ruins of San Xingdui. San Xingdui is an archaeological site by the Yazi River in Guanghan. Southwestern China's Sichuan Province. The site is located on near 30 degrees north latitude and 104 degrees east longitude. On the 30 degrees north latitude, there are several other great ancient wonders, including the Egyptian pyramids, the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, and the Mayan ruins. All of these sites have many mysteries for humans to explore. The name San Xingdui means three star mounts in Chinese, comes from ancient Chinese texts. Describing three star-shaped mounds together with a crescent-shaped cove, the terrain of San Xingdui neatly fits that description. The remains are regarded as one of the world's most important sites in terms of dimensions, timeline, and rich cultural finds. With the ancient city at its core, the site covers an area of 1,200 hectares. Surrounded by three walls to the east, west, and south, the settlement includes residential areas and workshops, as well places for sacrificial rituals and graveyards. The discovery of San Xingdui proves that there was an ancient Yangtze River civilization in southwestern China. Its founders excelled in bronze work, in jade and gold artifacts. Stone walls and ivory have also been excavated at the site. The architectural remains show that this was a flourishing settlement with many residents. Many Chinese archaeologists have identified the San Xingdui culture as part of the ancient kingdom of Shu, claiming the artifacts found at the site can be linked to its early legendary kings. Dai Kai CGTN. And the ruins were first discovered almost a hundred years ago. CGTN's Gao Yuming walks us through the decades of their excavation. 
In the late 1920s, a farmer named Yan Daocheng was digging a ditch in southwest China's Sichuan province when he accidentally unearthed a large stash of jade relics. The discovery soon caught the attention of archaeologists. In 1934, a team of experts began a small-scale excavation at the site, and they found more jade and stone carvings. Experts link the relics to the ancient Chu Kingdom. But further excavations in the 1980s led to new revelations. In 1986, archaeologists found two treasure pits from the Bronze Age. They contained thousands of artifacts, including gold, bronze, jade, pottery, as well as elephant tusks. They were carefully buried, most of them broken and burned, as if given as sacrifice. Radiocarbon dating traces their existence back to as early as the 12th century BCE. It's suggested that they could be part of a lost civilization, which had its own symbols, letters, cities, and rituals. In 1988, China placed the Sanxingdui site under state protection due to its cultural value to the country. Nine years later, the Sanxingdui Museum was opened, displaying the relics to the public. But the excavations and research haven't stopped. Between 2019 and 2020, archaeologists discovered six sacrificial pits at the site. With new efforts underway, we can expect more mysteries to be uncovered about the Sanxingdui ruins. Gao Yiming, CGTN. So now I alone would hardly be enough to explain the wonders and mysteries of Sanxingdui. That is why I have in the studio He Tianran, host of CGTN's Travel Log program. And Fan Jialing, Deputy Director of the Center for Museum Development and Research at the Capital Normal University. Fantastic to have both of you on, Tianran and Dr. Fan. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, let me start with you, Tianran. You filmed two episodes of Travel Lock at Sanxingdui. Take me back to your first trip in 2015. I mean, apart from the fact that you traveled in total style on that trip, <laughs> being flown in by a chopper and all,、right. what else do you remember?、Um, I, I think. When you visit the museum for the first time, and you go in and it's completely dark, and you see a sort of sea of golden faces、mm. shining at you, you know it's sort of almost like a contemporary art exhibition, right? It's it's not like it's something that was created in the past. But then, if you go to the exhibition hall,、um, they have two exhibition halls in total, and at the head of one of them, there's a timeline of Sanxingdui's culture and civilization, and it's. The same time as ancient Egypt, as ancient Babylonia, as the Indus Valley civilization. You know, these things that look like they could have been created by a modern artist were actually created so many thousands of years ago, and this is just incredible. I think it's mind blowing to be able to see this sort of art in the modern day.、Mm. But you know, the fact that it was created more than three thousand years ago is even more mind blowing. It's very interesting you mentioned Egypt,、uh, Doctor Fun. I'm asking this on behalf of our international viewers watching. I mean, they will understand this is an archaeological wonder in China. This is an achievement. But compare, we've had many of these around the world. Compare to what is known about archaeological findings in Egypt. What is so special about Sanxingdui? What is the significance of the findings at Sanxingdui? Well,、uh, you know,、uh, archaeologists have worked in Sanxingdui for decades.、Uh, they've got great dis- discoveries in these years, including ramped city walls,、uh, some palace areas, and sacrificial areas, especially the number one and number two pits. We've already know for、uh, for very well. And we have to put Sanxingdui site in the civilization of China and even in the Eastern Asia as a big background to help us to understand better understanding of the significance of Sanxingdui site,、mm. uh, because traditionally historians、uh, believe that、uh, the the core or the center of Chinese civilization is only in the uh, uh, central plain of Yellow River,、mm. uh, central plain area. But after the discoveries in Sanxingdui in 1980s, with all other discoveries along the Yangtze River in the Henan province, oh、uh, yeah, sorry, in the Hunan province, in Jiangxi province, in other areas, all these great discoveries、uh, in China exhibited that there、uh, aren't only one. 
core or center of civilization in mm. China. Are these still theories now, or you know, are scientists and archaeologists pretty sure? Yes, all these amazing archaeological discoveries are the evidences mm. to support or to change, actually change our, our traditional understandings mm. of what Chinese civilization is. Mm. Now we believe that uh, all these areas, not only in the Yangtze, uh, not only in the Yellow River, but also in Yangtze River, are the you know different regions of civilization during the Bronze Age time. Yes, it's very exciting that that narrative, that old narrative about where China civilization originated, um, is being supported by all this evidence. Do you think, Dr. Fan, that the findings that the things we're digging up this time could further bolster and support those theories? I think uh, that's all we are expecting. Mm. Not only archaeologists on the side, but also all the public. You know, uh, compared to uh, the first discovery or first excavation in 1980s, uh, that we called rescue archaeology. Mm -hmm. uh, the two pieces were discovered only for one month, mm. you know, uh, because of the time, because of the pressure, everything. But this time is totally different, supported by a state administration of cultural heritage and also the local government and all other many uh, scientific institutes in China. Uh, different experts from different disciplines, mm. uh, they carry all their, you know, high-tech equipment, Absolutely. they are all now in the, on the site. Mm. So we can expect that there will be more micro traces mm. about the site can be discovered, can be traced. So we, we are sure we will have more uh, information about Sanxing Dui site in this time. And all these uh, informations can, gave us, can give us more understanding, deep understanding of that not a theory, but an understanding of what the pattern of the development of Chinese civilization. We just yes. saw them working yes. in the pit, yes. all, you know, all suited up in absolute mm. um, uh, caution yeah. as they proceed with this process. Exciting, but requires delicate steps. In a few moments, we're going to uh, be taking our viewers to Sanxin Dui to look at how the exca excavation um, is being carried out. Very briefly, Tian, from you, what are your expectations for what's going to be excavated and discovered this time? Well, I hope uh, there's probably going to be more of everything, um, but not just more of everything as in Dr. bigger Fan said. quantities, in bigger quantities and better qualities, as Dr. Fan said before in the 80s when they were doing archaeological excavation, it was rescue, right? So. A lot of things came out of the pits very, very quickly. Mm. But this time around, as you saw, people are wearing hazmat suits. They're wearing, you know, they're, they're wearing protective gear. They're using very special utensils and implements. They're literally using toothbrushes to wipe away the dust. And this is something that requires a lot of time. But with the time, we're also able to take out much better, more complete pieces mm. of the relics. And uh, I know that a lot of the relics, when they were first discovered, they were burnt, they were destroyed, they had been shattered into pieces. and in the process of lifting out these relics, uh, as I understand, some of them can be also damaged. But this time around, we're getting these, you know, hopefully from these, these additional sacrificial pits, really complete pieces mm. of, of, of art. Mm. I was taking notes when our reporter was talking to us just now about some of the things that have been spotted and discovered at the pits. We're talking about golden face masks, um, gold foil, a wooden box, uh, Jade Collins, what about those findings that excite you, Dr. Fan? What do you look forward to seeing? Um, one of my favorite, I have to say, is the wooden box. Mm. You know, normally it is very difficult for organism uh, object to remain, you know, to discover, to gather information from these kind of uh, uh, evidences. But today, because of the high tech, because of the care for elaborate works of archaeologists and mm. all other experts, I think this time we can save this wooden box and have better testing and get more information from that organism object. Mm. Yeah, I'm thinking probably, I'm, it just a guess, you know, probably there are probably silk, some pieces of silk. Hold that thought. Yeah. Let's go straight to Sanxin Dui to have a look at the excavation work. Now what we are watching is the Sanxin Dui excavation shed. Inside this shed, there are four newly made 
archaeological excavation cabins. Currently, we have to pit three, four, five, six, seven, eight under excavation. And the six pits are located between the pit one and two previously discovered in 1986. And now you can see we have refilled the pit two. Currently, as we can see from the camera, we are minimizing the influence inside this cabin. We have also made a lot of innovations in our live streaming method. We are now walking inside the pit three. We are using this very high-tech camera to do the broadcasting to all of you. And very slowly, we are moving towards the pit three. And we are looking right now at the pit three. It's the first time for us to show this to everyone. We have the four pits of artifacts inside. And now I'd like to give the floor to Dr. Xu to talk about the progress of work. Yes, this is our pit three. For the pit three, it's the earliest discovered among the six pits. By the end of 2019, we have started our preliminary exploration. And we started the official exploration by this January. And we are also collaborating with another institute from Shanghai. And currently, we can see we have the three amazing artifacts of the bronze wares. And this is a one bronze one cup. And it's a very a common object from the Shang Dynasty and Zhou Dynasty. It's used for uh, the containing of the wine. And among the aristocrats of the Shang Dynasty, it's a very common object. It has a total length of 65 centimeters. And among this kind of discovery, and this is the biggest size of all, and it's generally complete and intact in its shape and also in its whole composition. And beside it, we have uh, noticed also two squared cups, one with a squared mouth, another with the circular mouth. And on the surface of it, still there's a very thick layer of mud for the consideration of the protection of its body. Maybe our viewers cannot understand the reason why one is exposed and another is still covered with the mud. Actually, we have our own considerations. For the surface of this vessel, for this cup, we cannot do the cleaning work on the site. If we just force the mud to be detached from the surface, it may damage the body. And you can also see the head of an animal for the body of it. We can see the tattoo of the cow here image, and also the other halves of the animals. For example, the uh, symmetrically distribution of the goats and also the birds. And for the images of the birds, it's usually seen in around this basin area of the Yangtze River. For example, uh, we have discovered in the past the eight objects with the similar decoration of the house of the birds. And this is in the shape of the owl, the owl-shaped image here. And this usually seen in the bronze wares. For example, in the past, we have discovered a similar bronze cup from the Fuhao tomb. And we believe that all these animals, they are considered as mysterious animals with uh, a strong powers with them. And that's why they are integrated into this system of the wine cup. And we have also used another abstract images to uh, form the total beauty of this bronze wares. And this is a squared mouth of a wine cup. In the very beginning, we have discovered only one line of the mouth. And by that moment, we are not sure whether it's a container or not, whether it's a cup or not. But gradually, uh, it turned out to be a very big vessel, a very big cup. And something interesting about this bronze cup, it's about the color. People would prefer to think that it's a bronze green or blue, but actually it's more like the color of yellow. 
So what's the explanation for that yellow? Uh, so it's a, a trace left by the times. And this part, oh. it's a separate part. In the very beginning, we thought that is part of the squared cup, but it's actually another part. It's a separate piece. So those are the two separate pieces overlapped. During the Shang Dynasty of ancient China, we have uh, more than a dozen of types of the wine vessels and cups. And in the southern part of China, around the river basin of the Yangtze River, those are the major shapes. And it's quite interesting for our researchers. Is it a choice by our ancestors or not? We still have to run more tests. And this is also a very strange object. Yes, currently we don't know how to name it. We don't know how to describe it very precisely. So we have to ask our experts for the uh, opinions. It looks like an altar for the sacrifices, and it's not yet fully unearthed. And there's also a base, and also with the intertwined copper wires. So to its both sides, there are some streams of the uh, copper wires, for example, to its uh, left-hand side, and also by the lower part, it looks like uh, there are some streams of the copper wires intertwined together, and also there is a cylindrical part attached to it. And the lower we go, we can see that they are covered by the elephant tusks. So have we ever discovered the similar intertwined copper wires in the previous artifacts? No, it's for the first time for us to see this. And it's just for the function of decoration. And to the other direction, we have noticed the four columns. And now we can see, uh, obviously, two columns, but there are also two extra columns. And there are also other legs. In total, we have the four columns as the legs. And then we can see the fingers, the arms, and also the feet, and also the arms. So it looks like it's a portrait in its sitting position. And currently, we have not yet discovered the head part of this portrait. So this is a very cute and very bizarre bronze. And it's one of the most important highlight discoveries. And here we have a sacred tree with all the branches stretching out. So this is our sacred tree. So now in front of us is a part of the sacred tree. And to the right hand side is the leg of the portrait. And the whole body of this portrait is covered by the patterns. And here we can see another three bronze wares, the bronze cups and also the bizarre bronze, the sitting portrait. And now we are moving from north part to the southern part of this pit. You can see all those uh, different parts of the elephant tusks. And now we are coming to the middle part of this pit. And this is a bronze facial mask. We can see the ears. Currently, we are looking at the back side of the facial mask. And you can see that this mask has really huge ears. And the front side is facing down. And it's also covered by the elephant tusks, so we cannot know for the moment what it looks like for the front part. And the whole volume is quite big. We have a total height of uh, 74 centimeters and also a width of 1.35 meters. It must be very heavy. It's really amazing and fantastic what we are seeing now. This is the mask facing down, so we can see the two parts of the ears. And we can also have a guess of the look. And this is the hand of the bronze portrait. For example, for the eyes and also the brows, they are painted in the black color. 
So what are they using for the paintings? We are not sure about the material, but we know the color is in whole black, and it can help to stress this outline of the profile of their face. Currently, we have discovered quite many similar facial masks. <laughs> the giant bronze figure might be the most valuable treasures in the paint, and we have discovered a real bizarre bronze wares. Now we are looking at a new piece. Are we looking at the hand parts of actually in this giant bronze figure, the two hands are clapping across each other. It takes a long time for us to discover this paint. It is a bronze figure supporting a bronze wear, and the bronze wear was standing on top of its head. On top of the bronze wear, there is a bronze wine vessels, and the middle part was covered by elephant tusks. We could see the bronze wine cup was sitting on the top. We have discovered the bronze wine cup from the first time, and later on we discovered the bronze figure gradually by cleaning up all the moss covering on that. We finally connect it. We could see a small head of the coal, and it is also hanging some of the wings, which is ready to hang some of the bronze bells. They have a pair of the bronze bells to decorate the whole wares. On the other uh, directions, there's another head of the dragon. We believe that this part is the head of the dragon, and the image of the dragon is quite similar to what we have found in page number two. This is the mouth part of this bronze wear, the neck part, the abdomen part, and I believe the two hands are clapping together. This is an important gesture featuring sensing the wounds. We believe there are something in between the two hands. It might be some of the wounds which is being carbonized. It is really a surprise to all of us because once we discover this hand gesture, it is an important indication of the sensing Dun ruins. And we have also discovered a quite small bronze figure here, a small bronze figure supporting a very small bronze wine cup. It is only around several thousands of centimeters, but here we discover a larger one which has a length of 1.5 meters. We are lo really looking forward to see its whole part. I believe with a human supporting the bronze wine cup, this bronze wine cup is indicating the absolute authorities. So this is a whole picture of the picture. With so many treasures buried under earth, the features is quite similar to P2. These are some of the laboratory workers make some of the records. We have done 3D scannings after we have unearthed the page number three. We have done the three scannings in every stage. After the Spring Festival, we re-scanned this page. We could see that at different stages of the excavations, the different wares actually gradually surfaced. At this stage, we could see some of the bronze wares. And in this stage, we could see the appearance of the bronze wares, the giant bronze mask, the giant bronze wine cup, and here it's actually a clearer image of our excavation campaign. This is what we are seeing right now. So through the different images that we have token, taken from the 3D scanners, it is important for us to restore what happened when they buried these treasures. It is also helping us to analyze these treasures better. This is an important feature for this time's excavation campaign. So we have to leave page three and move to page four.
We could see a whole picture of the pit floor with the archaeologist working hard on the pit floor. This is a hanging cradle, and we are seeing one of the archaeologists uh, who is excavating and using this special gesture. And this is actually a special design that we made for these times of excavations. The archaeologists don't need to step on the surface of the paint. This is a jade wear, a jade tong. So the tong has two parts in its Chinese characters. One part is indicating the cane, another part is indicating ancestors. According to the Zhou one of the classics in China, it is an important sacrifice wear to pay the respect to the god. It is a wear used by the aristocracies. At that time, we could see our archaeologists working in this paint floor, there are so many different piles of the elephant tusks. And here we could see another Yu Cao, Jade Cao. And we could also see traces of the burning on top of that. I could see our archaeologist is being well protected. And I believe the Humidity inside is only around 80 degrees. Generally, one of the archaeologists takes shift from another every 30 minutes because the works really consumes a lot of energy. So we could see a lot of moss covering the surface of the elephant tusks. I believe our archaeologist is using the bamboo knife to collect the mud on the surface. Although we could not see the general picture, but we could believe that the, the jade tong is a very well designed, and I believe this is a jade wear with no patterns on its surface. It follows the principle of a simplified beauty. They are also trying to record the procedures the archaeologist conducted on this jade tong. We are passing through the page 2, and we are going to the page 8 on the leftist side of this whole excavation campaign. The page 8 has uh, the largest coverage areas. Through the metallurgical detection, we could find a very strong metallurgical response. While the detector is telling us there are so many surprises waiting for us. So, where are we and what stage are we in? We are still trying to dig out the surface earth. I believe on the left side it is a stone dagger. Stone dagger is an important weapon, and later it becomes an important sacrifice wear. It is not a jeet dagger, it is a stone dagger. I believe in the time of Xia and in the time of Yao Shun, our ancestors firstly used the dagger as the worshipping ways to pay their ritual respect. We have not found any dagger, the stone dagger, in this size so far. So this is also an indicating that we are going to discover another national treasure. This is also the stone dagger. There are also other traces of the burnings. In page 3, there are so many different elements relevant to the buildings and constructions. We can see the burning traces of the wooden supporting pillars and also the burning traces of the walls. This is quite different with other different plates. Let's have a general picture of all the different plates, and we are also going to bring you more with the different plates.
and now we're following up reports. We are going to move to the page 6 and page 7. Currently, we are looking at page 7. I believe our archaeologist is still filling in the earth. The different page has progressed differently. So we have marked the different earth layers and also marks the latest progress. I heard that we are also going to collect all the earth. And it's also helping us when we are trying to figure out the different times through the its carbon traces. Our research toward the Earth that we have excavated is still quite shallow, but I believe our uh, the future archaeologists will bring up more information if they have or benefit from the Earth samples that we discovered today. It includes a lot of information, including the vegetations. We also would like to know whether there is the fat acid remains, etc. And now we are looking at the pit 6. The most important feature about the pit 6 is that we have discovered a wooden box here. It's never seen before in San Xingdui ruins, so it's never seen in history with the site. And its width is almost the same size as the width. And now we have advanced a little bit our researches because we are so curious about the things inside. We would like to know whether it's a coffin or not, this wooden box, and whether it has a correlation with the sacrifices or with the tombs from the ancient times. And actually, we can see that the whole wood here is heavily carbonized. What we can see at the first glance is only the mud and the soil. And after the preliminary cleanup, we have not yet discovered the skeleton of a human being or of an animal. But we still need to further our studies in order to know the things inside. We are also running the test of the silk protein because there are some black materials already carbonized inside this box. So with the results of the future silk protein test, we would know the answer to that question. And now we're about to bid goodbye to the pit 6 and have a visit of the pit 5. It's a rather small pit. However, it will give you a glitter of the gold, because inside we have so many gold leaves. We have the huge surface covered by those gold leaves. So what are these, the gold leaves? Uh, if you strike the gold and it can be transformed into the very slight pieces of the leaves. And they are not just put there like that. It seems that they have followed a certain rule of distribution. And for each gold leaf, there is a hole in the center. So we can have a guess. Maybe in the ancient times, there is a chief of the sacrifices wearing the cape and stitched to the cloth many gold leaves compared to the ceramics and also the bronze wares. Actually, the gold wares, they are not so common, especially when we date back to the Shang dynasty. For the pit 1 and pit 2, we have discovered 850 grams of the gold wares. And we can say today that San Xingdui site could be one of the most representative uh, culture sites for the utilization of the gold. And today, we have a much bigger volume of the gold here in the pit 5 compared to the pit 1 and 2. And some parts of the gold leaves, they are heavily damaged. So we have to continue with the restoration work. And here we have no also noticed some burnt ivory or the bones of the animals. We are running a laboratory test uh, to see whether it's an ivory. Maybe it's not the answer.
And we are waiting for the future surprises coming out from the pit five. We also have a journalist, Zhao Jing, waiting outside the pit five. To you. Yes, we are now outside the pit five, and we can see through the glasses of the cabin of the pit five, our workers are lying down on the operating floor, which is hanging just above the pit five so that we can have a zero contact with the soil inside the pit five. And our archaeologists, they are using the bamboo knives to clean away the soil and other materials attached to the gold leaves. And this is a work that requires a lot of patience and also careful work. And because those golden leaves, they are really small and the tiniest parts can only have the size of the fingernail. So today our workers here, they have developed their own tools, very thin bamboo pieces. And due to the differences in height, usually our audiologists, they will take shifts every 30 or 40 minutes. I've asked them whether they will feel uncomfortable or some dizziness after standing up. They say that it's quite okay, but it's the knee that really hurt. And when they are lying down on the belly on this operating floor, they will feel that time is flying because they are so absorbed by their work and they're fully engaged and focused in their work. They would like to reveal the secrets as soon as possible. And we also would like to know what are the future discoveries with these pits. And I have a Mr. Ma Yong Chao, the person in charge for the pit five by my side. I'd like to know what we have already discovered from the pit five and what is the current progress. Yes, currently for the pit five, we are still doing the cleaning work. Among the eight existing pits, this is the smallest in size. However, it's very enriched. For example, now we have already unearthed two very important artifacts. The first is a very huge size of the gold facial mask. In the very beginning, we are really surprised by this, and we were very happy. And later on, with the restoration going on inside the laboratories, we are amazed again by its size after extension of the gold. And the second artifact on the here is the bird-shaped gold leaf. In the very beginning, it was so unremarkable. Later, we have also extended and restored this artifact in the laboratories. And it turned out to be a bird-shaped gold leaf with a total length of 30 centimeters. For example, with very simple lines, the ancestors have depicted the tails and also the wings of the birds. It's a very vivid image of the bird. And you can also tell that the ancestors have already acquired highly advanced techniques for the art making. And also from this pit number five, we have discovered other circular gold leaves and also very huge ivory sculptures and also some other jade artifacts. And currently we are still processing with our management and also cleaning up with all those artifacts. So we expect to see more discoveries from pit five. According to our colleagues here, there will be another jade coming out from pit four. Please stay tuned. Thank you very much, Zhao Jing. Just now we have uh, admired together the glitters of the gold from the pit number five. And we know also that the gold facial mask is now inside the center for the cultural relics protection in the museum of San Xingdui. Let's go and have a look. Here we are at the San Xingdui Museum, only a few miles away from the exhibition site. On the first floor, we are opening up our laboratories for the restorations and uh, archaeological analyst of all the different treasures that we have excavated before. What we are seeing on today's camera is that we have discovered a really important treasures that we have dug up on page 5. This is a very impressive gold facial mask. It is also very huge compared with the gold facial mask that we have discovered on the page 1 and page 2. 
We are also conducting a material analytic research between the God face marks we discovered today and also the God face marks we discovered before. After the restoration, what kind of features do we look into this God face mask? After a periodical restoration work, we could find the figures and the lines of the Scott face mask. Through the comparison, we could see the artistic taste is quite close to the what we have discovered in page one, page two. It has diamond-shaped eyes, protruding eyebrows, and it is also in line with the features of the giant ears. We could see that it has a very similar facial complexion with what we have discovered before. Are there any differences? I think there is only one word to describe what I feel. I think it's very astonishing the skill and also the material it adopted is far beyond our expectation. And it's also a very huge god face mask. We have tested about its thickness. The thinnest part is 0.2 millimeters and the thickest part is around 0.4 millimeters. I could feel the glitters of the god in this god face mark, mask. Why does it have different colors compared with other different god face masks? We have also conducted material analysts on the god mask. We believe the ratios between god and silver is quite similar, with the god have composed of 80% and silver around 40 to 15%. You told me about the glitters of the gold and and silver. I think this is because it has done a really good job of the polishing during the craftsmanship. 3,000 years ago, the craftsman, the gold and silver smith, has a really good master of the polishing technique. So, so how does it help you with the knowledge of the restoration or the chemical compositions? I think before the restoration work, we need to understand its compositions, especially the proportion between gold and silver. It is going to provide us an indication of how soft it is. We need to understand its resistance to better shape the gold mask. It is a very complicated procedure. I think when it came to be unearthed on the first day, it is nothing like today and nothing like what we have discovered. When it was buried on underground, it was under a lot of forces and pressure, and it has covered a lot of earth. It, the earth was concentrated in the nose part. We need to clean it up on the surface. We understand it. There is a lot of erosion. We later on, we have cleaned up all the different mud, and we have scratched the got foil because I believe the dredges is also very important because it might be related to the patterns. We have invited an expert with decades of the experience in the god and silver to stretch this god foil and currently he is doing the job while paying attention to do not broke the previous decorational patterns. The final demonstrations of this Scott mask is nothing like what we have expected before. Thank you very much, Professor Ma. This is an important manifestation for the thousand years history of China. Here at the restoration centers, we have not only encountered this god face mask, we are also looking forward to welcome the new artifacts.
Incredible, incredible pictures. Truly, that literally took my breath away. Let me come back to my guests here in the studio, Tianyan and Dr. Fan. How amazing is that, being able to see how work is being done literally in the pit, including that tiny brush, how they use tiny brushes to you know, do away the mud and dust on those items. And it also shows us how times have changed mm -hmm. since 1986. If you think yes. back on how work was conducted in 1986 and how we have a truly expert team planning everything down to the last detail mm -hmm. and carrying the work in a very scientific, technology-fueled uh, manner. Uh, I want to ask both of you, let me start with you, Tian. Uh, what item impressed you the most this time? Well, I think you, you mentioned earlier, you, you, your breath was taken away, right, during, uh, Absolutely. during that. Uh, that clip. I think all of us sort of let out a gasp when we saw the, the gold mask mm. and I think it's incredible, it's, it's absolutely beautiful but I personally was more interested in the, uh, the little golden sort of leaves so they had holes in the middle and we were talking about it earlier perhaps they could have been strung together in some sort of ceremonial dress and if that was the case that would be amazing because we already have a golden staff in the museum which may have been a symbol of authority which may have been owned by one of Sanzing Dui's legendary kings and if we're able to find now a ceremonial dress also gold the only thing that's next is a crown and hopefully mm. you know his tomb but that that is incredible for me that pushes the boundary of the imagination here, really. Uh, Dr. Fung, what about you? What stood out for you? Uh, to be honest, uh, I share the same feeling with her here. Everybody loves yeah. gold. <laughs> <laughs> um, and especially because excavating ex that kind of teeny tiny twinkle star uh, golden leaf needs a lot of, lot of patience and uh, crafts uh, skills mm. for these experts on site. And I really hope that uh, experts they all can work together to excavate more uh, like the clothes, the clothing evidences mm. of these whole uh, piece of uh, archaeological evidence. Yeah, it, It's a fascinating uh, aspect of imagination, but it also talk to us about what that could tell us if we know more about the type of clothing that they, uh, that they wore. What would that tell us? about uh, people at that time and their rituals and their life? You know, uh, because, because of the lack of uh, evidence, mm -hmm. uh, experts are not 100% uh, agree on what the function of these pits yet. Mm -hmm. uh, different archaeologists, experts, they have their own you know, understanding of the functions, uh, the procedures of burial of this area. So this time, the relaunch of the excavation in this area, I think first of all, uh, we could have more understanding or we can get more information to help us to understand the function of mm -hmm. these pits. Are, were they sacrificial pits? Were they treasure pits? Yeah, and uh, more than that is we can, because this area was at the southwest part of the whole, you know, Sensendui Asian city. So we still also have, you know, debates on the function on the, you know, uh, of this area. So it's a whole area of, of ritual, of sacrificial, you know, uh, areas or some other functions. So I think more information will help us mm. to understand this area, the whole area, not only the pits, but also the whole area mm. inside the city. Uh, Tian, you've been there twice. Mm -hmm. And on your trips there, um, what you saw was items from previous mm -hmm. excavations. From pits one and two, yeah. yeah. Uh, have you noticed any differences or similarities between the items that you saw mm -hmm. Um, on those trips and what we're seeing today. I mean, uh, before you, you asked us a, a question, right? What are, what are we expecting from these new discoveries? And I thought, you know, maybe we'd get more of the same, but bigger and better and better preserved. And it seems, it seems that is the case. We saw um, bronze masks again. We saw um, a kind of a bronze ritual vessel called a, called a zun, right? Yes. It's, it was something, um, it's of a very specific shape, which hasn't been discovered in, in Sensing Day before. It's, it's square mouth, right? Yes. Um, this is something that is seen a lot in the Shang Dynasty, and it's uh, believed to be a sort of a, a very high level ritual vessel. Um, now, the discovery of that in, in these pits really signifies, uh, we're, we're, I mean, obviously, I, I can only guess at what it signifies, but it seems like we might be able to find even more impressive relics from these six knee pits. I mean, the the stuff that we found from the previous two fits 
are already incredible. You know, the mm. world's tallest and oldest bronze tree, the world's tallest and oldest bronze figure. And I'm really just hoping we're going to get more of the world's tallest and oldest something from these new pits. And stay with me right here on our special coverage. I have so much more to ask both of you uh, this time. And this is a special coverage on CGTN. We'll be right back after a short break.